Whether you're a content producer or a content consumer, are you backing up your files and storing them in the most efficient manner? In this video series, we're going to talk all about servers, how they can help you in your production, in your workflow, backing up your files, and even for those who are just consuming their content in their homes. Welcome back, my name is Joe from MetroPhotog.com and this video series is going to be all about servers. And while this video series is going to be a little bit different from the regular content we put on this website about photography and related news and gear, um, it still is very pertinent and has to do with how you're storing your files. We know that we take a lot of raw images. Raw images today, D800, has raw images that are up to 35 megabytes. So the file sizes are getting bigger with raw files. And we want to back them up. We want to make sure that they're protected. So we need file storage, good file storage, good backup of all that very important data, whether they're critical workflows for your clients, if they're pictures, priceless pictures of your kids, or even family members. So we want to make sure that we have all those files backed up and protected. So these videos are going to be talking about building a server. And for Mike and I, we really have gotten to the point where we need a file server. Not only a file server so that we can collaborate back and forth, but so that also we could protect all the images and the files that we've been uh, working on very hard, especially video files. Video files take up a lot of space. So this is much different from what we usually do on the channel with uh, regard to photography. It's a little bit more technologically uh, uh, pertinent, but it's fine. A lot of people uh, need some guidance in this area, and while I'm not a pro or, or IT professional in any means, I like to share my experience as I'm going through this along with you. So I have some notes here on my iPad, first generation, no shame, um, that I'll be looking down momentarily throughout the video. If you guys have any questions about any part of this video, make sure you put them in the comments below or metrophotog.com slash contact. We'll be happy to answer your questions. So, so the big, biggest reason why would you build a home server, and that is for centralized file storage. Mike and I work on some projects together, whether it's our vacation, you know, we want to put them all in a photo book, or if it's going down to Washington, D.C., stuff like that. The website is a big collaboration. So rather than passing those files back and forth through each other from uh, USB drives, which is slow, um, you, maybe an external hard drive, a USB 3 or eSATA is a little bit better, but still is slow, we're going to want to be able to pass those back on a gigabit connection, which could be a lot faster. And, and you know, being able to both get at the same files, potentially at the same time with a storage area network, would be a great help. So centralized file storage, a place that we could both put our files and collaborate and be able to do everything together. Also a robust file backup system, right? You On your local PC, you could locally do uh, your own backup, which is fine. I mean, here on the PC, I have, you know, I have a, a backup system that I use that, you know, writes every night the uh, Windows shadow copy or whatever, which is fine. But if something happens to this computer and it corrupts its own backup system, which Windows is known to do, um, we want to have another spot that everything is backed up. It's not a bad idea to have two, three copies of, of one image so that if option one goes bad, option two doesn't work, option three is always there. So robust file backup. Another good feature of having a centralized place where all your content is is being able to stream it. A lot of people will put all their content on a home server or a NAS device and then stream it to their Apple TVs or their Xboxes or even home theater PCs. So that's another great thing is being able to stream that content anywhere in the house to Apple TVs, which we have uh, your pictures, your videos, all that kind of stuff, and uh, even iPads and stuff like that. So that's great. Um, external file access. If you want to view a file that you left at home, say you forgot your USB key or your portfolio or something, you could always, uh, through the Internet, log into your uh, home server and then find that computer or that file, and or the, excuse me, that, that file on the server, really. And even connecting to other computers on your um, network through your server, which would, you could do. So to actually get to that file and never be in a situation where you forgot it. So that's external file access is another great um, feature. And then uh, many other services. I mean, you could take all of the hard rendering work and exporting away from your main computer that you're working on so you don't bog it down with all of those processes, send it out to the server and let the server do all that work while you're working on other things. You could have it uploading your YouTube videos for you, have it do all the uploading so you're not worried about that on your main computer, have it downloading software updates or whatever, uh, different 
assets that you might have on different servers, you could have it be doing that. And you can just take away all those intensive processes away from your main computer and put them on the server. So another big thing that the reason why Mike and I are going to be building our own file server is because of cost. When Mike and I went to Photo Plus back in October, we talked to all the big names, Drobo, Synology, QNAP, and while they make great products, they make complete bundled packages that we talked about earlier in the video about them uh, bundling things together that we really didn't need, things that I really didn't want to pay for, and the cost of some of these devices are very high for small startups. So in this video series, we'll talk about building a, I don't want to say a low cost, but a lower cost server. You could definitely sub in parts that are a lot cheaper and customize it exactly to what you need and for your budget as well. And so in this video series, we're going to talk about choosing those components, the critical components that you need for your needs. And we're going to build the hardware together, which is going to be great. A lot of people might know, might not know, might be proficient at it. Building a computer is a lot easier than a lot of people think, so we'll show you how to do that. We'll set up this, the software together, which I know is going to be a challenge for me, not really knowing too much about the server environment, uh, whether it's Windows Home Server, Windows Server, Foundation Server. I think Windows 2012 server is out now, so there's a lot of different types of, uh, of systems there. And then maybe even a free version of Linux or Ubuntu or something like that. So we'll check all those out and see which one's going to work the best. Maybe we'll even do a comparison video of those operating systems and their cost. And then more importantly, how that's going to be helping our production, how it's going to be assisting in our workflow, making it better. And the reason to build a home server is to make your workflow better and for your, your backup to be better. So we'll be talking about those things. Key tips along the way, stuff I screw up. Hopefully you don't have to screw them up to let me make all the mistakes. And then if there's something specific that you want to see, is there a question that you have, something you're not too sure about, you know, post it in the comments down below. Uh, send us an email over at metrophotog.com slash contact. Fill out the form. Let us know what you want to see in these videos. So the first video that's going to be coming up after this video is going to be all about the case. Choosing the case, choosing uh, the case for your needs specifically, and then the airflow of that case, making sure you have good proper cooling for your server. So that's going to be the first video up after this one. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. There's going to be videos coming out in this series, plus we have a lot of other stuff that we do, including the Monday show and other gear and other related unboxings and reviews. Um, make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Whenever I upload content or Mike uploads content either to the website or here to the YouTube channel, the first place we put it is Twitter and Facebook. And if you have any questions, again, put them in the comments below. Send them over to metrophotog.com slash contact. Fill out that form. It'll send a question right to our inbox, and we'll answer that as soon as possible. I'm Joe from metrophotog.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.